doubling sum of two million dollars. That number again, one. <laughs> So, do we already introduce ourselves? Should we do it again for real? Who's gonna start? Peter. Hi, I'm Peter Chan, and I'm, I'm uh, the lead artist. He drew this. that painting right there, right? <laughs> yes, I did, yes. Okay. I'm Larry Ahern, lead animator. You killed that bird. And I think that was a Leela scene. Oh, okay. She's the animal killer. <laughs> <laughs> I like the mustache trees in that last shot, Peter. I'm Tim Schaefer, co-project leader of this uh, lovely game. And I am Dave Grossman, other project leader and designer and writer, along with Tim, of this lovely game. That should have been our titles, Co and Other. Co and Other, yeah. yeah. Clint Bajakian, one of the composers. Peter McConnell, one of the composers. Nonsense. Nice. It makes me feel great. The game has begun, you guys. Smarter. Okay, so we saw the lovely... What was the name of that classical music that plays during the opening Ros voice? Rossini, uh, William Tell Overture. It's the quiet part of the William Tell Overture. There's two classical pieces that mean mourning in cartoons. Yes, there's that one and then there's... And, and the other one is... Uh, da, 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 That's from... Where is that from? I don't remember. It might be Pierre or something like that. That's a good guess. It's not another place in the Rossini, is it? No, no, I think it's Pierre Gint. I think, I think... But for that opening scene with the music, we actually got the score and, and, yeah. and sequenced the, the ink into the uh, MIDI sequencer. Mm -hmm. that, was one of the, that was one of the big panning sequences, like wide pieces of art for the game. Pan oh, the room over. shot? It was a double room? <laughs> and I noticed there's a poster with an L from Laverne and Shirley on that poster back there. <laughs> Here's one of our giant animation scenes. How did you lip sync back then? Because we, we didn't have any like tool. Nowadays we use a tool for lip syncing. Do you just by hand? I think we little, just like, timed it out like the old fashioned timing sheets. Now that was for the cinematics, but for in game, wasn't it Eric Wilmunder? I thought it just blah, blah, blah chatter. I think the in game, game was just on off with audio. There's, there's no actual lip syncing for yeah. the, the majority of the game, so it's which just, is funny since I have gotten many compliments on the lip syncing for this game over <laughs> huh. the years. Because, you know, it loops around and every percentage of the time it's on, right? Well, because I remember Eric... Yeah, I think Eric designed a, a, some kind of an algorithm for making the, the lips move to the like the level of volume. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. It, it, yeah, if there are the pauses, waveform. pauses the waveform. in the audio, the waveform, it stops yeah. moving the lips. Yeah. That's true. Now these uh, credits were done by Kyle Balda. That's You're right. You're entirely on his internship. Yep. So wait, uh, did we not pay for these he, credits? Uh, he, or did we? Pay for them? He got paid, right? I think so. Yeah. He took time. This is Peter, the other Peter. Um, we took time uh, out of Cal. He came and uh, spent some time with us, and we gave him this intro as an internship, and he did a, a fabulous job. Seems like a funny thing to do, like. Uh, Hey, you're an intern. You've never done this before. Do you want to do the entire animated <laughs> intro? The most. But I remember <laughs> when, uh, you know, when he finished something and shared it with us, we were all blown away by it. Yeah, it's awesome. The most iconic <laughs> signature piece. Can you yeah. hurry <laughs> and finish that before you go? <laughs> for the look of our game, and it was excellent. It was awesome. I would I would later learn that that was the perfect. This was the perfect piece to have Kyle work on, uh, because he was colorblind. As it turns out. I didn't know that. I, I, I saw him know. working on something else and he had other people picking his colors for him. Oh, interesting. There was another 3D artist we had there in the building that was colorblind too, and it was one of those things where people were just kind of, have you noticed everything he does? The reds don't make sense or whatever. I couldn't remember what it was. Oh, the cow. I always get really happy watching his credits. I like the stretchy cow. That cow should have showed up again later somewhere. Yeah. <sighs> Missed opportunity. What if the cow had come on their journey with them? Everything would have been so different. Well, here's you know? the story explanation right now for why the cow doesn't come. Because he's just tired. He doesn't want to make like, the walk. Been to the mansion before. Now this is the first fight I had with Peter McConnell. Do you remember this, Peter? Yes, I, I was gonna. I, you I were gonna mention that? You were gonna remember it because the opening cutscene was too long, and we and we always had a problem with too problem with too problem with too long opening cutscenes. And so we were like, 
let's split it in half and put an interactive sequence. So there's an interactive sequence that's about to start. But, but I seem to remember it was the wrong time of day for you because it's nighttime outside. It started in the daytime with the mutation scene, then it became nighttime. Right. But then what happened? That, then it turned into daytime at the end. That's what bothered you because the music couldn't make that transition in your mind. Yeah, I, I, well, I, well, I, well, I, well, I think mostly I was I was crabby because because you know we had to. E the, the cutscenes and, and the interactivity required a bunch of programming in iMuse, and I'd finished it one way, <laughs> <laughs> and and then you change it to another, and so I think I came up with some sort of artistic argument that had, had to do with daylight like that, and and uh, but but that's an important thing to learn running a project to not change things after someone spent hours and hours making something. Well, it was also an important thing to learn not to step way out of your bailiwick and tell the the guy who's writing the scene how to write the scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are bailiwick all over the place. <laughs> Aha! A secret passage. This is all too easy. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world. Had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river! Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course! That's why I'll have to do it! Yesterday! To the time machine! This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children! The Chronogen! Da, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive. Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not. This is the first time I've ever tried it on people. Well, I'll be. And then there's the porta potties uh, vessels. Chronojohns. Yep. Chronojohns. Chronojohns. This, by the way, is an amazing full screen animation before it was possible to do full screen. Yeah. And not actually animated. That's all. The background's all color cycling. It's all color cycling. A lost art in the world of. Uh, I forgot graphics. about that. Now yeah. that computers work like they should, you don't have to do that stuff anymore. You know, if you look at Mark Ferrari's website, not that Mark Ferrari worked on this game, but he was the master of color cycling. And he has a whole website where he's done it in a more high-end way, like like with high higher res color cycling. He get, he just kept perfecting that to higher and higher resolutions. Yeah, that stuff was crazy. He was into it, and then I think Bill Eakin was the one that inherited the mantle from him when he left. All the lava and Indy Four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See color cycling. 
Wow. Awesome. Yeah, so that was like playing. two, three frame animations. <laughs> and a little surf music for Hoagie. We always yeah. had a place for surf music in our games. That, the totally. bone wagon thing. That's right. I think that was, I think that surf music was yours. That was mine. Yeah, yeah. I did. I did that last little sequence there. Yeah, you know, the, the, the uh, musically, this, I believe, was the last project that we all worked on. To, certainly the last original title that we all worked on together, equally as composers, where there was no lead composer and we all pretty right. much panicked and freaked out together. Chief mail order jewels. What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. Okay, am I right, or is this this is finally the game starting? That like the game, all of that was intro. Right, all that was intro. The game has now finally begun. <laughs> and then as soon as you walk off screen, we freeze again for another cutscene. Oh, okay, now we're playing. So the original original cutscene was like seven minutes before we. And added before we it. added that brief, brief, tiny introduction to, we always were wrestling with that. I felt in adventure games, like you want to tell the story and set it up for, you know, the intro. But if we then, we, then you think of another, you know, before the. Intro, we should do this other little intro. And then you'd end up with all these like intros to the intros to the intros. Mm -hmm. And they get super long. I feel like that's just because we were inexperienced writers. <laughs> no, I some people no, like I, that. Some people like that you set the whole stage and then they're interactive. And some people are just clicking and they want to get to it. Yeah, but th we never respected those people, to be honest. We just clicked <laughs> to get through it. The reality is you guys had a story to tell. And, exactly. and that's the way to set it up and get people invested in it so that when they actually get into the interactive like the part, they feel invested. And Were these cutscenes escapable back then? Did we? Yes. Could, but well, yes. You'd be so confused if you just started yeah. this game. And... Right. And I do feel like we're, we're, we're asking the player to play a, a part in this story, and it's mean to make them wait so long before they can. True, but at least they're being entertained. But of course, it's a classic, full of mistakes, but a classic. It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time of only 0.01 seconds. Wow! I've got the plans. Quick, we have to flush them to Hoagie. How did you get over there? My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flushed them. Yes! Down the toilet. No, through time. Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Hello? Dr. Fred, can you hear me? Drat. Did you hear something? No. Let's see if what's-his-name catches on.
Oh great, I'm stuck in colonial times, tentacles are taking over the world, and now the toilet's backing up. Okay, come over here. It's your old pal, Dr. Fred. Dr. Fred, how'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the chronogen, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He'll know what to do. You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your chronogen. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. Time for me to save the world, I guess. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, this is that, that we talked about a little bit when Dave and I Cody. played through. But and originally, you could play all three characters right away. Remember that? Is that true? Oh, that yeah, true. you could play you could play all the characters all right. from the very beginning. And we had our first pizza orgy where we tested it's the game out, lot. and people were like, oh, there's so many options, and they were overwhelmed. But, so now we unlocked it, so you get to play as Bernard for a little yeah, while, and really then you do something out. that makes us you can play Hoagie. Mm, and then Vern's the last. Yeah. And yeah. what about the other three kids? They got cut. There were three other kids? <laughs> they were three other kids. Do you remember who they were? No, I don't remember anything it's about the three other kids. a piece of paper. I have a piece of paper that has a picture of them. Moon Glow. Moon Glow, Chester, <laughs> Chester. and Razor. And Chester became... Chester and Moon Glow ring a bell. Chester became Ned and Ted. T Wait, His not character. Ned and Ted. Jed and... Or whoever they were. Jed and... Ned and Jed. Ned and Jed. Okay. Ned and Jed. And Moon Glow just went away. And Razor went away as well. I mean, I stole the character design from Chester and said, oh, I, I like that. I'll use that for these guys. <laughs> and put them in a powdered wig. Why do the work again? Really? Exactly. Um, how did we... I'm trying to remember how we did... How because, we referred to it to score it, because we would have had to play the game. I think what we did, yeah, I'm trying to remember too. Hold I think up what a video we actually, camera in front of the I think, screen. I think what we did was we got a, got a save game made, oh, and we would play it to the next, like, place where you could pause, or, uh, like we would, the next space bar point or something like that, and then we would score it, and then we would make it so that the music, because the thing was that you couldn't rely on the sync, right? Mm -mm. So you, we had to actually make the music interactive in a sense with the scene so that it could depending on how fast of a machine you had and how quickly therefore the scene would play would the music actually hit the right hit points and then proceed correctly to the next hit point so we would have an accordion like we basically had an accordion like structure at each little section it yeah. would sort of pause and then resume at the hit point or jump to the hit point if the hit point was reached first yeah and we which might. I'm trying to think if we would be the only the fastest machines. Right. How about an amendment that the president has to be a human being? Please, this is serious business. You're right. Well, you know, uh, I remember we would deliver a piece of music and, and of course, it's comprised mostly of MIDI note uh, events, which is just a tiny little piece of, of, of data within the MIDI stream. Um, note on, and it happens at this velocity on this channel if, to this instrument and whatever. And I would deliver a piece of music and the programmer would turn to me and say, Clint, this is this is over 32k. Yeah, it's huge. 32 <laughs> kilobytes. 32 kilobytes. You got to cut this thing down. Who we do you think we, you are, Mozart? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said it's it, we, we can't take anything bigger for this scene than 24 
kilobytes. So I'd go back and thin the percussion. I'd sometimes have to cut a whole section of the music out to get it down well, to Well, sometimes 20. there was pushback, though, too, because we'd say, all right, look, 10%, we get 10%. You remember that? Uh, yeah, I remember yeah, the pushback. We, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember these technical discussions about yeah. the size of the music files. Oh, oh yeah. Literally, yes. and I remember specifically, 32K was often too big. That's why the iMuse system got called the iMuse system, because it was originally called the sound drivers, and then everybody got all upset that because drivers can't be can't occupy the whole, a whole floppy disk or whatever it was that they system occupied. All right, paint. Well, you know, uh, I remember we would deliver a piece of music and, and of course, Excuse me. Yes? What are you looking at out there? The future of our nation. That young couple by the tree? No, no. I was just admiring my reflection in the window. Striking, aren't I? Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. Awesome. Indeed. Is it true about you and the cherry tree? Oh yes, it's quite true. Why, I've cut down acres of cherry trees in my day. I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there, oh, well, what do you know? There is a cherry tree out there. Well, let's go chop the sucker down. I said come down from there at once. Try to understand. I'm stuck in this. Voila! You're quite a man. Yes, I know. Get me out of here! I haven't done anything! Well, you must have done something or you wouldn't be here now, would you? You'd be out in the lobby with your tentacle owner getting dressed up for the human show. Owner? No one owns me! Gosh, no owner, you say? Well, don't worry about it. I'm sure someone will come adopt you before we have to put you to sleep. Damn that, Dr. Fred. Hey, she knows the Edison family motto. 